We hear reflection bouncing of the walls and various surfaces reaching our ears. This phenomena known as reverb. The reverb effect is an integral part of sound design for video projects. Let's explore how it adds a touch of life to the end of a video. Here is the video without the reverb effect. And here is the same video with the reverb effect applied. Incorporating the reverb effect at the end of a video as an alternative to a fade out creates a truly captivating conclusion. Now I'm gonna show you the process of adding the reverb effect to the original music right at the final moments. On the timeline, we have our footage on the video track and music on the audio track 1 in Premiere Pro. Let's listen to the audio first before applying the reverb echo effect. This is the normal ending which is quite boring to me. So we can apply the reverb effect to make it better. First, we need to slightly extend the audio layer. I'll use this part of the waveform for reverb echo effect. Let's use the razor tool to make a cut right at the point where the waveform starts rising. Then make the final cut where the waveform is going to fade out. Once that is done, we can switch back to the selection tool. Delete the extra part of the audio that we will not use. It is not recommended to apply the reverb effect directly to the original audio track. Therefore, we need to drag this audio to audio layer 2. Next, we need to enable audio track mixture by navigating to the window menu. Once open, it will display several sequences and we must select the correct one. As our working sequence is footage, so we have to select that in order to enable reverb effect for this sequence. This is our audio track mixture and the other one is audio clip mixture. They are not same. Let's navigate to the track mixture and click on the small arrow icon. Now we focus on audio 2 since we have placed the audio portion on the audio track 2. Finally, it is time to apply the studio reverb by clicking on the download arrow or filter icon. Choose the reverb and select studio reverb. We can now play it back to observe how the reverb echo effect is working. The time indicator just stopped at the end of the audio because it is the end of the sequence. Therefore, we couldn't listen to any audio reverb effect. That's why I'm gonna extend the video layer. In your case, you can do the same or apply the adjustment layer to increase the playtime of your sequence. Let's play the sequence again to see how much it has improved. It is still not good enough and we can't hear anything. So we need to make some adjustments to improve the reverb audio effect. Go to the audio mixer and then double click on the studio reverb. Or alternatively, right click on the studio reverb and select edit. In the pop-up window, I wanna push the decay slider all the way to the right for maximum effect. Now let's see how it is working at the moment. It's slightly better, but some further adjustments are still required. Let's explore how we can make it perfect. First, we need to create an in point here by pressing the I key on the keyboard and then navigate to the end and create an out point by pressing the O key. Second, we need to enable loop playback so that the video keeps playing in the selected area. If you are missing the loop playback icon, you have the options to set it. Click here on the button editor and drag the loop playback icon and then hit OK. Now we can play it and listen to the audio once or twice. Next increase the weight. I would like to set its value from 80 to 90. Alternatively, you can set it to 100% if you prefer. You can also adjust the dry output level. Listen to the audio carefully and set it to around 90%. This way you can easily adjust the settings while still listening to the audio. There is an issue at the end of the audio, like the rising sound or something loud. To fix this, we can trim a small portion from the end of the audio layer or apply the default transition which is constant power. To clear the in and out points, right click on the sequence and select clear in and out. The next step is controlling the audio volume level. Sometimes it is important, especially if your video line is too short for the reverb echo effect. Let's zoom in on audio track 2 and click on show keyframes. If you are missing the show keyframes options, you can easily set it from the customization settings. Now click on show keyframes, then track keyframes and select volume. Now create a keyframe exactly here by holding down the control key and clicking the mouse. 
set a keyframe at the end and drag it down to make the audio level zero. Let's see how it works. It's good but the audio is fading out too quickly. Let's create another keyframe in the middle of the reverb audio. Then slightly drag the second keyframe downwards to the right. Yeah, that sounds better than before. However, in my opinion, I prefer not to adjust the audio volume. I would rather keep the reverb effect duration around 5 to 6 seconds. I am to let you know that I have another exciting sound design tutorial for you. You can easily find the link to it in the description below this video. That's all for today. Thank you for taking time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you soon.